video nearly six months on and it would have been Phil's birthday today. I just want to talk about Phil because he was a wonderful man. My best friend. My boyfriend on and off for a lot of years and my best friend. I met Phil when I was 10 years old and Phil started the last year of primary school with me in Miss Morris's. Phil hated her, you know, because she was quite strict and he'd be like, oh, I don't like Miss Morris. And we grew up through high school together and I used to phone his house and his mum was married to Elliot at that time and I'd phone his house and I'd say, hey, is Phil there? And it'd be usually Elliot and he'd go, I'll, I'll get him for you. And if it weren't Elliot, it'd be Ben or Sophie. And the days when he used to have to actually call somebody's parents to speak to him. Um, and it were, it were odd, you know, ringing up at, but please can I speak to Phil? And then we all got mobile phones just after high school, all about 13, 14 years old. All got mobiles and started phoning each other. And I'd phone him and kids would be screaming. And he'd be like, will you wait a minute while I go somewhere where kids are not screaming? Because they were only young at that stage. Um, and we'd talk. And he, I, I helped him through some t tough decisions at college and, and things like that. I was a big part of Phil's life and Phil a big part of mine. And I think... Six months later, you start to remember the good times. You're still sad. I'm still sad every day that I wake up and I don't get my usual morning greeting because we moved into this house last January and it's starting to get completed now. But when we first moved in, it was just basically two beds and not very much else. And... Phil used to wake up every morning and be like, morning gorgeous. And for a while, for a few days, a few weeks, he didn't really like being here. He'd go home a lot because he, he, won't, he won't used to it. Then he'd start saying, when I'm not at home, I miss it here. And he started calling this home and his mum's his mum's. And I loved his mum. I used to call his mum, Mummy Elaine. And his mum was just such a lovely woman. And we'd, we'd, I've been his mum's a few times. And she's just so, like, the whole house is just such an atmosphere of, of giggling and laughter. Um, because Phil made, Phil made any room light up. You know, you could be in the crappiest of moods and it, Phil would appear and you'd just be happy. I remember days when I was so down because I lived away from home. I lived over in Eden for two and a half years. And not that Paul made me down, because he didn't, but I'd be so down because I'd miss family and friends. And Phil would walk in and be like, Aya! and it'd be just instant change. We were, you know, inseparable from 10, 11 years old. Um, we went about three years without actually seeing each other. And that's the only time I actually regret. The three years I didn't see Phil uh, in my life because Phil always brightened up my day. He'd come when we met up again. He came in and I said, it's a gay bar and my dad works here and he's a drag queen. And Phil just never faced him. He just walked in, sat and had a drink, chatted to all my mates and fitted right in. All of my friends said that Phil was just the most kind, caring, loving person. I didn't meet one person that ever said, oh, that Phil's a nasty piece of work. It were always, oh, that Phil's ever so cheery for all of his problems. Phil dealt with spina bifida and having a colostomy and neurostomy bag as well. See, he taught me well, didn't he? I know what were wrong with him. And he dealt with it so well that there'd be occasional times where he'd have a slight accident and we'd just go get him some new clothes, off he'd go, and that'd be it. Phil was just starting on the road to becoming this really 
mature young man. When he moved in here, it's like he changed completely. He were there and supportive for his family. Um, and he were there and supportive for me. Um, he went and sorted his shoes out. He used to wear these special shoes and he went and he got his shoes sorted. I went and got a new wheelchair. And Phil had started to stand up for himself and put his foot down and and say what he wanted out of life. And for a lot of years, Phil was just a quiet one in the corner who never really spoke. Phil, though, always made me giggle. He'd always be joking around, always, always, you know, having a laugh, never serious. Phil brightened up every single day he were in my life and everything we did and everywhere we went, everyone had always just assumed we were married. Oh, your wife, she's a bit bossy, isn't she? And I was. I was bossy with Phil. And Phil never took it as me being bossy. It was just, I want male, this is how I was. And Phil accepted it. I was never rude or never, you know, nasty. Just bossy. Just, oh, Philip, do this, you know. And his mum used to join in on it. She'd go, oh, he needs a good slap now and again. Phil made all our lives so much better for him being in it. And I am privileged and honoured that I knew Philip. Phil and me, like that, from 11 years old until the end, I love you, I miss you, I will always have fond memories of times we spent together. The school play when he played Cinderella and I were the king. Lots and lots of memories that are stored in my head. I love you, I miss you, you were incredible and I just hope that I meet you again one day. I hope that everyone that's dealing with Phil's passing today and that it's hard for them because it's his birthday and he'd have been 28. Happy birthday, Phil. Ah, thinking of Phil in a positive way and thinking of good memories they have with Phil. Thank you very much. Bye.